I will not uh, be talking a lot like Cinderella. Uh, my plane is at 12 in the evening, uh, so uh, I will not talk, uh, be talking a lot. The press, Arab and Western perspectives. I was lucky in journalism in reality because I was trained in Reuters. I worked in the English newspaper. When I went to London, I started working with the Arab press. I uh, had the capability and before this and uh, that uh, I was uh, uh, chief in Reuters chief leader in Reuters. Uh, the traditional or uh, new, uh, paper, newspaper, is news and views. There is nothing else, news and views. The news should be true. The writer should be able to prove that this is true. And uh, the perspective is for uh, the writer. I give you a true news, definitely. The newspapers all over the world will be ending or it is about to end. The two countries which I know best, UK and USA, every month the sale of newspapers is less than, uh, uh, is less th compared to last year. They give you the numbers, even the first uh, uh, number, the price and that uh, of something else. I lived in Beirut. I went there 35 years ago. The uh, Telegraph and the Times used to sell more than 10 million copies. Now they say, sell less than 500,000. It will end definitely. Your newspapers are prosperous because the country is prosperous. And the newspapers uh, now in the USA, there is a competition with the technology, with the online newspapers, with the internet. So there is competition definitely, which, which we do not have, similar to the newspapers that we have in Dubai and uh, Abu Dhabi. As you know, we are uh, backwards from most of the people 10 years. Perhaps we might uh, uh, really be with them after 10 years in the lack of resources and so on and so forth. When I lived in Washington in the 80s, My office uh, was at the uh, Madison. Uh, it is called the office building. Uh, facing the Madison was the Washington Post. Ben Bradley, the chief editor back then, used to come to the coffee shop to uh, take his lunch. We were young journalists. We used to uh, uh, see them. Uh, if the president uh, is holding a press conference being broadcasted on TV, there's no problem whatsoever. But if they have a news, for instance, the UAE has bought arms and weapons or is intended to buy uh, weapons from the USA. I do not publish this news unless uh, we make sure that the news is correct from two independent sources because the news should be correct and true. We uh, really got to know the accuracy from them. In London, if the news is wrong, this is very bad because it, they will be uh, really uh, uh, brought to court. And the loser not only gives compensation to the defendant, but uh, also he pays the expenses of the lawyers. It might reach one million uh, pounds, UK pounds. I shall tell you two experiences of mine. 
Sorakia, a newspaper, they, uh, they wrote that uh, I blackmail the uh, Saudi emirs. I go to Saudi Arabia 10 times per year. Uh, the next day, uh, they knew their mistake. Uh, I uh, uh, really uh, made a case in the court. They paid the expenses. It was about 150000 I announced in the court, I do not want money for myself. I want to donate them to the Association of the Arab Women, their yearly uh, dinner was on my expense. My daughter is in Cambridge. She was the head of the water polo team. I gave them 10,000 pounds. The girls went to play in South Africa. The South African girls are Amazonian girls. They're very tall, uh, and the Cambridge uh, girls, they played eight times, and uh, they were defeated eight times, and they came back to tell me uh, uh, why this trip, uh, we were uh, better without it. Uh, uh, so... Uh, uh, a newspaper really uh, wrote something uh, about me and uh, one of them really lost in uh, the high court very close to my offices. He came and uh, resumed uh, the or appealed at the court. It cost him 550,000 pounds. He went to the most uh, uh, the costly uh, lawyer, uh, Peter Katarak, in England. When I've uh, read the first letter, I got afraid because I know that he hasn't really lost a case. He lost in the appeal. So um, 950,000 pounds. He paid about 1 million and 200,000 pounds. Uh, he paid them in installment 400 thousand uh, or forty thousand pounds uh, uh, per month I found out after the Israeli spring which they called the Arab Spring after what happened in Egypt uh, there is something called uh, the complaints in Egypt al uh, uh, in Arabic. Uh, if I really complain that to, uh, a person is a thief, and uh, this uh, person uh, really uh, brings uh, lawyers who defend him, uh, they uh, stay for a year defending him, and he ends up being a victim, uh, or uh, he gets uh, acquitted. Uh, Ahmed Shafi is a close friend of mine. I always uh, see him. The country has given him a villa in one of the uh, posh uh, hotels. He has uh, three girls. Uh, they live with him. They tell me that I have no money at all during uh, the area, uh, the uh, age uh, of uh, the Muslim uh, Brotherhood. Uh, I used to file uh, cases against all, all of them, those who accuse him of uh, stealing, and uh, he won all the cases after the demise of uh, the uh, Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, they, they were uh, getting accused and judged for once in Egypt, uh, those who uh, really uh, accuse someone uh, on purpose. Uh, if they pay the expenses of uh, the lawyers, they will not get any complaints whatsoever. This is the issue of complaints in Egypt. In London, it is known. Why? Because the loser will pay for uh, the uh, lawyers. I have noticed on the margin of uh, this uh, issue that the American law is completely different or is marginally different. In London, the uh, current law, similar to the Sharia uh, law, uh, the uh, 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 honors of proof. If I accuse someone of being a thief and I cannot prove it, he won the case. In the USA, they have another uh, amendment, uh, the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, which uh, confirms uh, the freedom of speech. And uh, therefore, if uh, I accuse uh, someone of stealing, it is not enough to prove uh, that uh, he has done a mistake. He, the defendant should prove that as a result of the uh, accusation, he became unemployed, he has lost the contract with the government, so there is uh, a tangible uh, 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 damage. The, if the law is not really uh, uh, proven, uh, so Khalid bin Mahfoud, he has died, he filed 20 cases in London and he won the 20 cases. He used, they, he used to be accused of uh, financing terrorism and the evil. The last uh, case, he, uh, 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 Jewish uh, um, uh, American uh, uh, woman who uh, called him financing evil, and he fought the case and he won the case. 
they wanted her or they ordered her to damage the book, although the book is uh, really uh, sold in the USA, and she paid him $200,000 uh, as damages. I think that this kind of law protects people. Uh, regardless of the or uh, unlike the uh, Egyptian law, no one uh, gets uh, uh, account uh, gets accountable. Salisbury Square. They uh, really moved from Fleet Street. There is no newspaper whatsoever in London. Uh, during that time, uh, uh, Express and other newspapers are all gone now. But back at the time, they were there. So uh, they taught us the law. They taught us uh, the importance of journalism is as important as the sources of the news. Uh, the journalist is not there to see that uh, I think or I believe, no, this is not true, you uh, relay uh, the news of uh, the people. You want to write an article, so be it, but you don't give your opinion or perspective, no. In reality, I say that I benefited a lot, uh, uh, the uh, presidents, uh, the Arab presidents from uh, uh, King Hassan II to Sheikh Zayed, the, the, both uh, now are uh, dead, God bless their soul. I knew King Hussein, I knew uh, the president Bashar al-Assad and President Mubarak, and I used to relay news. I have all the news every year from them. Uh, I can say, on the margins of what we're saying, uh, the most cultured uh, Arabic president was uh, Hassan II. He is like uh, a mufti. If you have any question, he will answer you. At the same time, uh, there's a lawyer in France. Uh, I, uh, uh, he took me once to show me Buznika, uh, his uh, horses. I told him, uh, Your Excellency, uh, who are the Muslims, in your opinion? Uh, he said that, that we are uh, uh, really, uh, we know who are the Muslims. He said we are seven. The four sects, the Shia, Jafarite, the, uh, the Zud uh, for Yemen, and Abadi. Abadi are Khawarij. Some of them are in Oman, others are in Algeria and Morocco. Uh, the uh, Ismailiya, Alawiya, and Druze, uh, I uh, uh, mentioned these sects. No, the king said it, these are not uh, Islam. Uh, during the, that day, uh, they held a conference in Jordan. I noticed that there are eight sects. I thought perhaps they invited the Ismailiyin because they are their friends. Uh, uh, there's a lunch uh, for King Abdullah II, uh, the Emir Zayd Amin Ra'ad. I used to call him Islamic light because he had a light beard. He uh, is the head of the institution of Ahlul Bayt. I told him what uh, King Hassan II said. Who are the eighth sect? He said the Zahiri. Is that the Zahiri in the uh, in the world? Yes, because they take the facade of uh, the text. They don't accept the interpretation. What is prohibited is prohibited. What is not is not. So there are hundreds of thousands residing between India and Indonesia. Asia and other Asian countries. King Hassan II is the most cultured uh, of all Arab uh, uh, kings and also Sheikh Zayed. Uh, President Hosni Mubarak, as well, is still alive, the former president. He, I used to say that uh, Sheikh Zayed is uh, a great person. He used to take uh, money and uh, get a loan to uh, give the Palestinians uh, and to help them out. Uh, they used to, uh, uh, back then, the oil was not uh, really, the bar per barrel was not that uh, costly and overpriced. We cannot lie here. 
it was back then three dollars per barrel now it's 108 dollars per barrel we have to be cautious president bashar al-assad i've seen him 30 times but all what he has done has surprised me i've never really uh, really uh, uh, thought that he would do all this uh, if he wanted to commit suicide it would have uh, been better he was perhaps naive i think i haven't really seen what uh, what might insinuate uh, 150,000 deaths, so, which means every family has uh, is mourning. We have spoken of the sources of the news and journalism. The English taught us, because we used to work in England, that the most important thing is that the writing is direct and easy. They said that the cat sat on the map, so every sentence is very clear, very obvious. They don't like the 12 syllable words, they like sentences that are clear and easy, easy to write. I noticed in Arabic that all attempts that the Arabic language is weak, especially the journalistic language, even the weakest uh, which I uh, found. The shakes of the TV, I call them the shakes of the TV because I uh, uh, studied literature, they uh, really uh, um, don't know how to uh, uh, make good grammar in the Arabic language. I am not saying about uh, or talking about Taha Hussein, but uh, uh, we want a clear uh, sentence, clear Arabic correct sentence, grammarly speaking. I'm not saying that we should write like Taha Hussein, but at least a clear sentence. This is uh, uh, every newspaper has a certain style of its own. The words that we use as journalists uh, that we reiterate all the time, I take two styles only, uh, writing the uh, the Hamza in Arabic, uh, the writing of the nouns, and uh, the numbers and the figures uh, also is different. This is not difficult at all. In the text that I wrote here, they are saying in the first uh, page, which I have, that the newspapers are about to get extinct. And this is wrong. Takad tanqarid in Arabic. If I find something in the Holy Quran, they will not really discuss this with me. In the uh, Holy Quran, he says, Yakad is eight and new day. Yakad yanqarid. It's about to get extinct. Yakad yanqarid. This is a mistake getting reiterated all the time in the newspapers. But it does not, which means sometimes it does not take. Uh, uh, the the, which is al tarif in Arabic, which is the t h e. Some uh, tell me that uh, uh, in the uh, Holy Quran, perhaps uh, it uh, might uh, uh, it is used more than one time. Qala ba'don. Some people have said this. Is, this means that uh, there is the intention of adding uh, more words. So perhaps it does not take the or al tarif in Arabic. Dun or mendun, with or without, means uh, either it uh, it has or it hasn't. So uh, some names uh, are uh, being written as a fashion these days. For the past three years, uh, um, they are uh, saying that uh, this person has declared this and that. This is wrong. Uh, in uh, Arabic, we should say that the auxiliaries. Uh, are uh, are put as such uh, and they go back to the word before the auxiliary after the arrival of king hussein to london he has declared not the other way around this is not acceptable this is the way we write in the arabic language there is a story in tradition the wali has said that the prince of princes wanted me uh, to uh, uh,
to demonize uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Uh, so this is in Arabic. Everyone understood this uh, as he wants, but according to my own experience, it is not difficult to write and learn a true language, a true uh, uh, grammatical language. There are no difficulties, definitely. I am not talking uh, uh, about uh, uh, really uh, the gradation. If I want to uh, walk on the path of the Holy Quran, I would have said Markaz al Dirasat wal Buhut, the ECSSR. So uh, the writer is describing uh, how to write sentences in Arabic. The language of the Quran is very clear and very obvious. We should use it in order to write down certain things. I am not saying that I am knowledgeable or the journalist can write the language of Taha Hussein. No, this is wrong. Perhaps it is there and it is possible and we can do it, but we have to try. I shall not speak further. I am ready to hear all your questions and uh, forget about the 12 uh, midnight. Thank you very much. Thank you for the ECSSR for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. I would like to thank Mr. Jihad Al Khazan for this uh, interesting lecture. So you have uh, talked about your long-standing experience in the field of journalism, about the nature of journalistic work, uh, press, and uh, the importance of uh, the accuracy of news, which is considered one of the most important components of journalism and press. Now we would like to open the floor for questions. If you have uh, any question, please uh, introduce yourself and uh, the uh, institution for wh which you represent. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, Dr. Muhammad al Saeed, uh, uh, literature dean and al Hassan University, I would like to thank you for this lecture and thank the ECSSR for inviting us uh, to discuss this important topic. You talked about common mistakes in uh, Arab uh, journalism. Uh, you talked about uh, the Arabic language and the journalism as well. Can uh, the journalism play a role in improving the Arabic language or maintain and develop the Arabic language? Do you think that the, the press can play a role in this uh, context? I hope so, because uh, people read uh, newspapers and articles every day, so we can see a daily reaction uh, to uh, the newspapers and the press, uh, unlike uh, the studies and research. Uh, the uh, interest is general and public. When I was preparing the study, for example, and uh, without any respect or request, we have Al Arabi magazine here. The first topic is about uh, linguistic citizenship. And in Al Haya newspaper, I saw a title, Language as a Part of Identity, four pages about uh, the language. So uh, this happened in, two, happened in two days. My colleague Mustafa wrote an article in Al Hayat newspaper uh, about uh, the modern journalism and uh, the challenges of the Arabic language. I think that everyone is interested today in improving the Arabic language, but I think that everyone should focus on that and benefit from the development on, of the Arabic language. What I wanted to focus on is uh, to write a correct sentence, simple Arabic, uh, with a correct grammar. So um, I think that uh, the Arabic language uh, was a hobby for me. I was interested in uh, um, looking at uh, Sibawai's uh, uh, theories. I hope uh, that uh, the press and journalism can contribute uh, to uh, maintaining uh, the Arabic language. Today it's part of the problem because we have uh, daily mistakes uh, uh, committed in the press and journalism. 
we have for his part, from his part, um, used in Arabic from this side, from the other side. They're trying to translate uh, uh, English sentences into Arabic, and they're not consistent in Arabic. Afif Mubarak, uh, a professor at Al Hassan University. I would like to thank you for this lecture. Um, uh, I admire your uh, writings, and uh, I admire as well your lectures about uh, writing and uh, Arabic language. My question is the following. In uh, the electronic magazines, uh, newspapers, and websites, we can see a trend uh, of, uh, of a lack of um, surveillance, of correction uh, today. In Al-Ahram, for example, in the past, it was uh, really hard to find a mistake in an article. Today, the situation is different. We have many common mistakes, and uh, websites uh, copy from each other. So uh, the mistake uh, occurs in a different, uh, on different platforms. Do you think that uh, this is due to a lack of professionalism or uh, morals? What do you think? Thank you. Thank you for your appreciation. The uh, degradation is happening in each and every field. Sometimes uh, uh, you would feel disappointed. When we republished Al Hayat, I looked for Dr. Istantin Zreik, who wrote about Arabic nationalism. Uh, he was a professor at Princeton and Harvard in 1932. I met him at his daughter's house in Washington. Uh, Edward is my friend and his wife as well. When Edward Said uh, died, he was considered to be uh, the leader of uh, the liberal uh, thinking uh, movement. Uh, and I think that Nizar Kabani is one of the most successful uh, poets. And uh, he was very brave. And uh, oh, I really enjoyed uh, hearing his uh, uh, poems when I used uh, to, to visit him at his house. All of those have died uh, today. Mahmoud Darwish, for example, he also died while I was negotiating with him. He had problems uh, in his heart. I think that uh, we do not have today uh, writers uh, which are up to the level of the writers uh, who we lost. Mahmoud Abbas won uh, an award from uh, Al Faisal Association, King Association. So I think that degradation is happening at all levels in the political field uh, as a result of the revolutions that the Arab world witnessed in Egypt uh, specifically. The Muslims, the Sunni Muslims, are killing other Sunni Muslims. I, in the Quran, we can see that uh, this cannot happen. This is not possible. Which means uh, that um, the uh, people of the Bible, of the Quran, uh, should not kill each other. They should live in peace. But I think that at the end of the day, we should be hopeful and um, ask God for, um, for a better future. I apologized because I was uh, late to reach you. you were, we were talking about the electronic press and media. Uh, I was in a conference in Dubai. And uh, we were uh, saying that uh, the newspapers uh, are not to be extinct, uh, but they should uh, keep pace with the uh, electronic and uh, online developments. And this is what the newspapers in the United Arab Emirates are trying to do. They are trying to um, use both uh, traditional and modern media. What do you think about this? Uh, this is a good point. And I can say that I agree with you because the Audit Bureau of Circulation, the company which monitors distribution, 
is still monitoring uh, the uh, electronic distribution, the number of uh, e-newspapers uh, uh, readers. They consider this as a part of the newspaper sale. But I can tell you that the figures, uh, without no exception, are decreasing uh, every month, and uh, the numbers are decreasing every year. So you can check this on the ABC. Uh, so we can, this um, decrease is there and uh, is ongoing. I read the newspapers every morning, uh, um, the New York Times and the Washington Post uh, online. And uh, of course, uh, the distribution of the e newspapers is calculated. And uh, these newspapers um, are keeping pace with traditional and modern media. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, Khaled Omar, a journalist and writer. Mr. Jihad, we have enjoyed your uh, lecture and we are happy to have you here. I have a question, if possible. I remember that uh, you had an interview with uh, Al Arabi newspaper in 1996. You said that the chief editor is uh, the most uh, powerful um, authority in uh, the uh, institution. Today, what do you think about the intruders uh, to the newspapers, to the media? Do you think that they would benefit from the current situation uh, at, uh, and uh, amid the, this uh, media landscape? Do you think that the decision maker uh, still uh, relies on uh, the written text and the printed text? Mr. Ibrahim Al Abid was saying that it is agreed today that um, written or traditional media can coexist with modern media. And uh, I think that today there are many TV channels uh, that uh, um, are present today due to the presence of uh, newspapers. For example, Ashuruk, Al Watan have both newspapers and uh, TV channels. And uh, as I know that um, advertisers in uh, the UK um, have a condition which is to have uh, their advertisement in the newspapers and on TV as well. What do you think? Concerning the last point, this is a good commercial uh, position. They know that uh, the newspaper is degrading and regressing and is trying to focus on uh, the TV, which is part of the modern media. I think that it's a good idea. But when it comes to the internet and uh, the social media platforms, in Lebanon, they used to say, uh, every citizen is a guard, and uh, today uh, we say every citizen is a journalist, uh, which means uh, that there is no credibility because you do not know the source of the information and there is no accountability and surveillance. And uh, this, of course, creates chaos. And uh, it also sometimes causes uh, or attacks uh, the uh, liberty and freedom of uh, some people. as well as their privacy, of course. I think that uh, this uh, modern media cannot uh, g gain uh, the same level of credibility as uh, the traditional media. In the past, uh, we used uh, to say that, uh, for example, the virginity of uh, women once, lo once lost uh, cannot uh, cannot be Cannot, we cannot get it back, so um, this is very important and uh, the same concept applies uh, to journalism today. Today, uh, we should choose. Uh, the Arab media has always struggled. There are no enough freedoms and I think that uh, there should be a certain uh, level of uh, um, consensus uh, with the state. Uh, usually the uh, official should uh, fear the press. Here the press fears uh, uh, the officials 
And uh, I think that this was the situation in Lebanon. Andrews is one of the most important journalists in uh, the US. Uh, I'm telling you a story from the 60s when I was a student. He wrote a, an article, how can you close, uh, how to close a sound ba bank. And uh, he was, he sent uh, to the Time Life uh, uh, saying that um, he has wrote this article. Uh, he told Al-Karami that he stopped in Lebanon while he was uh, going to the Far East during the Second World War. He told him. He, Mr. Prime Minister, the intelligence wrote a report about you. And uh, then he replied, Mr. Prime Minister, all of those uh, should apologize uh, to uh, this uh, journalist. And Mr. Prime Minister, if they do not apologize, uh, uh, our newspaper will declare war on Lebanon. And uh, I can assure you that uh, you will never receive one extra dollar of American assistance. So Rashid Karami told us, uh, or was asking us, do you think that this is true? Can he do that? Rashid Karami speaks English, but I think that uh, he didn't re have a good English. He was a wise man. He said that we cannot accept this, and if what you're saying is true, we are going to investigate. And uh, I think that the apologies were not will not be enough. I will be sanctioning them. So I think that uh, for the first time this happened, uh, the journalist was threatening uh, the official. So I think that. Um, in the West, uh, they have a higher level of freedom, and uh, this is not the situation in uh, this region of the world. Um, however, I think that uh, uh, in Kuwait, in Lebanon, in Egypt, there is a certain uh, degree of uh, freedom. Uh, in other countries, uh, the journalist uh, should make his, uh, a lot of calculations before attacking uh, the government. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, can you please uh, stand up uh, because we would like to see you, please. In the name of God, the most gracious, uh, the most uh, merciful, I'm Khaled al Abaydat from Jordan and I am a consultant for Wise Global Company, Mr. Jihad. I would like to thank you for your uh, lecture. Good night or good evening to you and to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. I heard you describing at the beginning of this lecture what happened in the Arab world as an Israeli spring. And we know that the press has played a pivotal role in this spring, regardless if it's Arab or Israeli. I have uh, two uh, related questions. Uh, the first one is, does this mean that the Arab press has um, become under the control of uh, the Israelis? And uh, the second part of the question is, um, is, is it easy to control uh, the Arab citizens uh, even though the press is controlled by Israel? Uh, the Arab press is not controlled by Israel. I don't think that Israel has an influence on any uh, newspaper. Maybe a certain Arab newspaper has committed uh, some mistakes. Uh, it's a wiser uh, uh, interpretation. On the other hand, there are some uh, newspapers uh, who have a certain level of credibility and which can be trusted. Um, but on the other hand, uh, there is a majority of newspapers 
that do not have the same level of credibility. I said that it's an Israeli spring because uh, the only beneficiary from uh, this spring is Israel. I don't think that Israel was responsible for the revolutions, but Israel is benefiting from the revolutions. So we can take the example of Egypt and uh, Libya, where there are uh, three million uh, armed uh, people, armed men, and uh, um, there are many armed militias. In Iraq, for example, there is an un unannounced uh, civil war. If we watch TV every day, we can see that there was 20, 30 or 40 people killed in the Arab region. We were um, complaining about Israel uh, who killed uh, people in, uh, in this region, but the, the number of people killed by Israel are not as many as uh, the people killed uh, are, that are being killed today. I think that um, we, the old generation, were proud of uh, uh, the great uh, journalists who died. Uh, and I think that uh, the journalists today are not up to the level of uh, the journalists uh, with whom I worked when I was in my 20s. Mr. Jihad, I have a question. I would like to... Um, ask you the following question. You said that uh, the Arab press and uh, the current Arab journalists are not uh, similar to the uh, journalists and press in the past. What are the steps, the measures that should be taken in order to uh, develop uh, journalism? You're saying that the Arabic language is not hard. Uh, the most important thing is to have a room for freedom. As a journalist, uh, you should make sure that you can visit all Arab countries, regardless if you have criticized the government of, or not. If, for example, in Lebanon, I decide to attack uh, a certain party, what's the guarantee that uh, the newspaper will not be bombed um, I should be very careful because I'm responsible for my safety and the safety of my colleagues. So the most important thing is to have a room for freedom. The journalist should be able to say what he wants so without uh, facing sanctions on himself or on his family. In uh, Syria, for example, uh, this is not possible and uh, the sanctions are really tough. I think that this room of freedom is uh, the most important component. Uh, we also, also, the media needs um, advertisements, ads, and uh, um, should be independent. But at the end of the day, this freedom is the most important thing. There should be a law that protects uh, the uh, journalist, uh, the freedom of expression. This uh, doesn't mean that the journalist can insult people or dishonor them, but I think that uh, this room for freedom should be there. The government uh, uh, that is working for the sake of the people shouldn't be scared, shouldn't fear anything. I cannot uh, tell you enough about the prosperity of the United Arab Emirates. Two or three weeks ago, I have attended uh, the government sum summit. Everything has become computerized and um, the new technology is there in the United Arab Emirates. I told my friends and I told even His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed and uh, His Excellency Mohammed al Girgawi, I cannot praise you enough because uh, Um, it is not possible to uh, to hear uh, different opinions. Uh, for example, uh, it is not always easy to negotiate with the journalists and uh, convince them. There is a certain uh, level of um, how can we, for example, negotiate with the Muslim Brotherhood? It is not possible. So you think that the changes that happened in the Arab region, the Arab Spring, have they helped? 
and giving room for freedom in Egypt, for example? Do you think that the journalist can speak uh, freely and express his opinion without being held accountable? I'm not defending Mubarak. Uh, before, there was a uh, room uh, for freedom. Uh, specifically in Egypt and uh, Kuwait. In uh, Egypt, I asked uh, Mr. Mubarak a question. I have interviewed him more than 20 times. I told him, when would you appoint a vice president? Every time he used to give me a different answer. Once he told me that he looked for one, but he didn't find. So uh, the uh, journalists attacked him. They told him, uh, who do you think you are in, um, among the uh, 80 million uh, Egyptians? Haven't you found uh, a suitable vice president? And uh, I think that uh, at that time, there was a room for freedom to, to see this. There was a certain level of uh, freedom. Maybe this room to, um, is um, wider today. In Kuwait, Saddam Hussein is not there anymore, uh, the Kuwait is independent and there is a room for freedom. Why are they nagging? Why are the journalists are nagging there? I think that uh, uh, nagging has become a trend today and people are misusing uh, this room for freedom. In Bahrain, uh, um, in Kuwait, uh, sorry, uh, the people want to be part of of uh, the government and um, I think that uh, uh, today uh, this is not easy and um, there is a misuse of uh, uh, authorities and powers. Mohamed Al Ghazi, a political researcher at the ECSSR. I would like to thank you for uh, this valuable lecture. I think that uh, when we read the title, we would expect a comparison between uh, the press in the West and uh, the East. And uh, I would have expected uh, maybe a, a more in-depth uh, comparison between both. I think that all of us know that uh, the press in the West is objective, uh, neutral, um, unbiased. I think that there is... Uh, a certain level of uh, neutrality. And, uh, of course, uh, the uh, press there can impact uh, the public opinion. How can we make sure that uh, the press is objective, but at the same time governed by the law, and impacts the people and the public opinion and creates the public opinion, but I can, sometimes we can see that it uh, overshadows uh, the public opinion. Maybe in the Arab world, uh, the neutrality is not there. Uh, the press uh, doesn't impact uh, the public opinion. And uh, maybe you have given some reasons uh, which are be behind that. You talked about fear and lack of freedom. Do you think that these are the real reasons behind that today? For example, we have freedom, but we still see that uh, some newspapers uh, are s still not doing well. I'm not only talking about uh, the Arabic language and about the grammar rules, uh, but I think that uh, the press language, journalistic language, is uh, lacking. Do you think that there are uh, deeper uh, reasons behind that? In the Western uh, press, uh, there is a higher level of professionalism. I can give you a clear example about that. Uh, New York Times and Washington Post, uh, I can tell you that every piece of news is accurate. Uh, there is no room for mistake, but in uh, the opinion um, margin, uh, you can see um, all kinds of opinions. Uh, so in the opinion uh, uh, articles, you can uh, read uh, all opinions, and in order to hide uh, this uh, uh, biased position to Israel, uh, some uh, moderate uh, Jewish writers, who are among the best writers, try uh, to write on the editorial board, uh, which is uh, the opinion of the board. So we, we should uh, uh, take uh, the news from them, which is accurate, 
and uh, these newspapers uh, try to impact the public opinion through these editorials and uh, uh, opinions. We can give an example of a father who has children, a house, and he has to, who has to pay uh, tuition fees for all of them. Uh, he would not uh, act like Mother Teresa. He would try to uh, protect his interests. I think that in some Arab countries, the situation is better than others. I hope that the situation con continues to improve because, as you said, when there was freedom in Egypt, uh, many mistakes were committed. And I give you the example of Ahmad Shafi, uh, and uh, there are many other Ahmad Shafiqs or examples of uh, of this um, attack on uh, these political figures with no um, basis. Good evening. I'm Ms. Salim, a journalist. I'm happy to be among you here today and would like to thank the ECSSR uh, for uh, giving us this opportunity. Uh, concerning uh, the uh, competition uh, between uh, the modern and traditional media, I think that it's a positive uh, competition uh, because it uh, decreases uh, the costs of printing I think that uh, modern media also is uh, advancing technology um, in the field of press and journalism. I think uh, that uh, once uh, or one should understand the limits of freedom and the journalist should understand the meaning of real freedom. My question is, are the Arab newspapers uh, published in London implementing the standards of uh, credibility? Um, you, s you talked about the necessity to have two sources and uh, to make sure that the news is accurate. And um, do you think that uh, the publishing laws in uh, the UK are efficient? Thank you. Very good question. The immigrant uh, newspapers such as uh, Sharq al awsat and Al-Hayat are based in London but cover uh, the Arab region. So uh, um, what applies uh, to the Arab newspapers applies to these immigrant newspapers. Nizar Kabani, for example, was, I would not say aggressive, but he was uh, um, an offen um, offensive. He wanted uh, to access uh, the news and all the uh, possible information. And uh, I think that uh, when I used uh, to read uh, articles, uh, um, or Nizar Kabani, when he used to read articles, he used to change one word uh, only. Uh, he used to contact uh, the uh, department responsible for this and uh, choose the most accurate word. My objective was uh, to read the newspaper every day, but he used uh, to think that his wor the words are his daughters and is responsible for defending their honor. So I think that uh, there is a competition with the internet, between the traditional media and the internet, and there are some um, complementary complement elements. The most important thing is to have an integrated system so as to allow the newspaper to um, get revenues from the printed newspapers and from the e-newspapers. As we said, uh, the TV is, um, of course, will last and is a component of uh, modern media. But I would like to say that we are suffering from two things. I talked about the lack of freedom. And uh, I would like here to talk about uh, the lack of access to information. Here, uh, the newspaper uh, uh, or journalists would try to approach the government in order to get information. In the United Arab Emirates, uh, for example, uh, the, the people come here in order to um, access uh, the information. Good evening, Dr. Ali Al-Amoudi. 
a senior journalist at uh, Takrir in Adnok. We are delighted to have you here, Mr. Jihad. It's a great honor uh, for uh, the uh, journalists in the Arab region. Uh, you are a person who has a mission and a vision, uh, even if you're outside the Arab region. There is an English uh, proverb, uh, Mr. Jihad, and you have come from uh, uh, these countries. Uh, it says, the empathy can make the most sound And this impacts the press and uh, the media. This example applies uh, to the situation here in the Arab region. As uh, you have said, uh, there is uh, no credibility and uh, um, there is a lack of um, freedom. And you said uh, that when you report news in the UK or in uh, Western countries, uh, the uh, UK law prohibits you from um, giving your opinion. So objectivity is stipulated by the law. Are there limitations to reporting news in uh, the UK when it comes to the Arab world, the second part of the question is about the Arabic language. I think that uh, the Arabic language today is uh, suffering um, and it is being misused. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid issued a decision in Dubai which obliges uh, the public institutions to use the Arabic language. It's a first step in order to activate and improve uh, the level or, or uh, the quality of Arabic language in uh, the UAE. However, uh, the Arabic language is still suffering and the English language is still reigning. Um, in, uh, the, at the academic level, in the universities, for example, the students I uh, are requested to pass the TOEFL or the ILS, and in addition to other examples, why uh, don't they take uh, they don't take into consideration uh, the Arabic language? And how can we improve uh, the situation of the Arabic language today? Thank you. I can tell you, I wish we can improve uh, the status of the Arabic language today. In uh, the Western journalism, uh, there is a law. There we cannot talk about uh, limitations. This applies to the UK and the US. So when there is a law, you know your limits. Uh, you know who's responsible for you, who's monitoring your work. So you can be held accountable uh, in accordance with the law. Let's forget about uh, Beirut. Uh, let's talk about London. In London, I write every day. And I have never apologized for writing uh, a certain article. Because when I write an article, I base my information on evidence and uh, I sometimes uh, and I keep uh, my interviews with the presidents and uh, with the ministers. So in the court, they ask you to keep your notes, and this is what I do. I keep uh, the notes uh, on which my article is based. Uh, for 30, 35 years, I've never been obliged to withdraw or apologize for any article, but I have been trained there in the West. Uh, this is why I know my limits. Um, for example, when it comes to Arab journalists who go to London, they do not have the experience and the training, and they lose uh, the cases uh, uh, when they face me. I remember an Arab journalist who used to attack Mahdi Tajr ev every day. Mahdi Tajr um, uh, raised the case against him and won. And... Uh, I think that um, this uh, doesn't apply to this Arab region because there is no law uh, that can protect uh, the journalists. So uh, the second day, um, the uh, journalist uh, was uh, bagging uh, Al Mahdi uh, in the title of uh, the magazine, uh, not to or uh, to um, eliminate uh, the um, case fees. I think that this is quite funny, but. 
the uh, transparent and uh, honest uh, journalist is very well known. Uh, and I hope uh, that uh, the Arab uh, journalists uh, would uh, take into consideration uh, the public opinion on the Internet, which is expressed uh, on uh, the uh, um, electronic platforms. I think that uh, the law today is uh, not being able to regulate uh, the uh, uh, electronic uh, press um, because uh, the electronic press is uh, much wider than uh, the traditional uh, press. Mr. Jihad, uh, based on your long-standing experience in the field of uh, journalism and media, do you really think that the West uh, press uh, conveys uh, the situation in the Arab world uh, with objectivity. Uh, the news are highly objective, but uh, there are the comments and observations. Uh, uh, for example, when there is a leftist uh, uh, journalist, uh, this uh, shows in uh, the comments uh, of the journalist. When we have, a, uh, for example, a rightist, uh, also the comments uh, are uh, influenced by uh, the orientation of the journalist. Sometimes in uh, The Guardian, for example, which is a leftist uh, liberal uh, newspaper, uh, a certain piece of news uh, would be analyzed in a different way than The Telegraph or other uh, rightist uh, newspapers. Uh, of course, uh, what I can say is the information is always accurate, but uh, the interpretation uh, differs. And uh, this also um, applies uh, to the way uh, news were conveyed on Syria and Egypt. And um, the, the newspapers, for example, try to highlight uh, the positive uh, uh, things that uh, are in accordance with its orientation. And I think that uh, we are aware of the orientation of uh, all the newspapers and we can tell um, about it uh, even before reading the articles. Walid Hamad, an engineer. How can we improve professionalism and uh, journalism? Uh, as you said, uh, the, uh, the journalism is uh, divided uh, into two parts, uh, the opinion and uh, the accurate news. Uh, so how can we um, improve uh, the levels of professionalism in the Arab region? Uh, what are the um, added value that we can give uh, to journalism in order to have uh, professional uh, journalists? I think that uh, journalism is kind of a talent, but um, according to you, how can it uh, be improved? The uh, judgment is in the hands of uh, the reader. Uh, the reader would judge if uh, the news is objective or uh, biased. And um, so I think that uh, the reader is uh, the king. And I believe that everything starts at the university in the faculties of journalism. I can talk about uh, the university where I studied. I think that uh, the prof professors were objective and they taught us uh, the real um, journalism in a very sound uh, uh, academic way. But when it comes to um, uh, practical journalism, the situation is different. Uh, we live in uh, countries where the situation is uh, difficult and uh, you should make, uh, and the um, Arab journalists uh, should uh, make uh, uh, harder calculations than uh, the uh, Western journalists. And uh, usually the Arab journalist uh, chooses what is con the news uh, that is convenient uh, to the newspaper. This is not what we were taught in uh, the West. Um, you start with the uh, direct news and then you give the background about the story at the end of the article. When we had the, the NLF, uh, the uh, National Front, and uh, the Front for the Liberation of the Occupied uh, Yemen. And um, 
when uh, the country uh, was independent, uh, the uh, reporting uh, differed from uh, was in one newspaper to another. And um, they came to us and we told them that uh, we are the uh, majority. Uh, however, at uh, that time, uh, the Egyptian media was in control and when uh, the country was independent, uh, the uh, National uh, Liberal Front was in control. Uh, so as a reader, you have uh, the uh, judgment. Uh, you can decide who's objective and who's not. And I think that uh, this depends on uh, the nature of the journalist, uh, orientation of the journalist and the newspaper. So if you know that the newspaper is leftist, you would know how it would deal with a certain uh, uh, piece of news. I think that uh, we should aim to become as uh, accurate in our reporting as um, uh, the uh, Western press. David Cameron. Um, it may be called a stupid ass by a certain newspaper and can be uh, blamed. But I cannot say, for example, in the UK that he is a thief. So uh, there's a difference. There is, um, there's a difference between uh, the news and the opinion. So news and views. I think that if we are optimistic, uh, we'll hear good news. I would like to take a question from ladies, the ladies. Could you please uh, stand up so we can see you and introduce yourself uh, before the question. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mr. Jihad al Khazan. I have a question. Do you think there is an enough intellectual room for the uh, Arab citizen to express uh, his opinion, or do you think that uh, there is freedom of expression here in the Arab region? The situation uh, differs from one country to another. Uh, in some countries there is chaos, such as Lebanon. Everyone expresses his opinion, and maybe all opinions are wrong, and there are no uh, limits even uh, and regulations, uh, even the courts. I was uh, transferred to the courts many times, but I was never, um, the order was never issued, or the sentence was never issued. Rashid Karame was uh, in uh, the Sarai, in the government building, um, did a statement, and we covered uh, this statement, we were accused of uh, uh, revealing a secret. So, um, and Ghassan Twaini at that time uh, decided to boycott uh, the coverage. I was in Oman after that, and when I came back, uh, they, um, I was arrested by uh, the uh, authorities in Lebanon. And um, I think that, um, and at that time, I was blamed for uh, this coverage, and I was uh, concerned because I was uh, a member of the syndicate and I wanted to get married. And uh, maybe the judge at that time thought of uh, um, detaining me for or arresting me for uh, three or four days. But at, at the end, he told me sit down and told me. that I will not do that. So I think that uh, we would need few years in order to, um, we, I think that few years will not be enough in order to reach the same level of credibility and transparency that we have in the West. I think that we should start by knowing our limits and uh, uh, at the same time, this uh, should start from, uh, the, from education. Um, journalists uh, usually are uh, taught in universities and schools uh, um, and in order to be professional uh, they should have uh, the uh, capacity to uh, translate things uh, objectively. I think that this is uh, quite uh, limited and uh, uh, scarce in, uh, in the Arab region. Good evening. I have two questions. Could you please introduce yourself? Mamdouh Taha, a journalist and writer. In the past, 
journalism used to unify and politics used to disperse or divide. Today, it's the opposite. Uh, uh, journalism is uh, dividing and uh, politics is unifying. Do you think that uh, the uh, press regressed and politics advanced? You've been um, living in the West uh, for 30 years or more. And uh, we, when we talk about the Arab Spring, we say that uh, the West has uh, uh, called w the revolutions in the Arab world, uh, in addition to the conspiracies and everything, as Arab Spring. And uh, the Western media is uh, today supporting what's happening in the Arab region, or the chaos in the Arab region. My question is, how do you assess uh, the Western coverage of uh, the events in the Arab region, and how do you assess assess uh, the Arab-speaking uh, uh, media uh, coverage of what's happening in the Arab world. Concerning the first part of the question, the Arab uh, press uh, does not have enough influence to divide or unify. I think that the Arab uh, press is uh, blamed and accused and it is not capable of controlling the public opinion. Uh, the, the revolutions in Tunisia and uh, other countries uh, um, stemmed from uh, specific reasons. Uh, when it comes uh, to the uh, coverage of Arab events, This uh, coverage uh, usually uh, reflects uh, the orientation of the newspaper. For example, what was written about Egypt, according to my personal uh, opinion, was, uh, uh, was maybe a mistake or um, was done on purpose. In Egypt, for example, I know the president, the ministers, and uh, maybe the taxi driver as a journalist. However, people uh, do not have enough information about Egypt and what's good or bad for Egypt. So, um, as I said, when it comes to Egypt or other Arab countries, the coverage was, uh, so did the mistakes sometimes on purpose. and uh, the mistakes were desired. The Muslim Brotherhood uh, was uh, toppled. I do not want to talk about them enough, but I think that strange things happened. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood accessed power and uh, 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 they um, opened uh, some tunnels uh, to Gaza and then closed uh, others. And uh, Omar Sulaiman was my friend. I used to trust him, and he was one of the most intelligent uh, uh, politicians in Egypt. He didn't close any tunnel. He gave me a map, and uh, Mrs. Al Husseini was with me. And he told me we know each and every tunnel, and we know the rent of this tunnel, and uh, who owns uh, the tunnels. And he said that the rent for weapons is the most expensive. Um, I was sitting with him, um, someone called him, he, he told him, yes, Mr. President, it was uh, President Carter. He went uh, to the bureau and he gave him a list of what they are doing uh, for the Palestinians in Gaza. And he was talking about uh, the tunnels. So he gave him a long list about what is being provided. Um, but what happened is that the Muslim Brotherhood closed the tunnels despite the fact that Hamas is supportive of the Muslim Brotherhood. The tunnels were closed and all channels were closed. Uh, and uh, today they are accused of supporting uh, them, of attacking the prisoners and uh, attacking the prisons and releasing the prisoners. I think that the situation is quite complicated. Complicated at the level of uh, um, freedom, of the internet competition. But I think that uh, it, it, will, it will persist, it will survive, but we should know how to deal with it. And I hope that uh, the Arab reader would have enough experience uh, uh, to, um, to distinguish uh, what is uh, objective uh, reporting and uh, what is not. Uh, we'll take the last question. 
last two questions. Gentlemen at uh, the end, Taisir Sleiman, a public employee. Thank you, Mr. Jihad, for your valuable uh, lecture. My question is, in Israel, or Israel is um, building settlements in uh, Palestine. And we can see that uh, uh, Israeli press or journalism and is uh, working uh, to serve uh, the Israeli uh, mentality and settlement. But in the Arab world, We consider Palestine our own uh, country and nation, but what is your assessment of uh, Arab journalism coverage when it comes, or in terms of uh, the Palestinian cause coverage? As uh, you know, in uh, the Arab uh, country or countries today, we have many causes. We used to have only the Palestinian issue uh, cause, but today we have many others. There is an important uh, thing when it comes to the Israeli uh, press. Uh, I'm uh, writing or, uh, about uh, the Israeli government. I call them uh, Nazist, uh, apartheid, uh, um, killers of uh, mothers and uh, children. So I, I used uh, to give my opinion about people, but not about the government itself. And uh, this is why I uh, try to avoid racism, uh, because I, if I attack uh, the government itself, uh, I would be accused of racism. I have been transferred many times to the courts, but no sentence was issued uh, against me. I opened Google and I uh, saw that my name is mentioned in more than 26,000 uh, articles. Uh, four uh, articles are about uh, anti-jihad, uh, anti-Semitism. And uh, I would like to tell you that uh, Haaretz is one of the best uh, newspapers in Israel and it defends the, the Palestinians. Jadon Liva wrote a month ago and said, if I was a teacher, I would talk about the attacks uh, facing uh, Palestinians and uh, the genocides uh, committed uh, by Israel in uh, Palestinian cities. And he is an Israeli. I know also the um, peace, uh, Israeli peace group. Uh, or there is Nuri Pellet, and uh, she is one, uh, she is the daughter of a leader of War of 67. Uh, her daughter was killed in a terrorist attack in Jerusalem. She has become an activist. But to be uh, fair, there are new Nazists and um, neo Nazists, and um, they have also good people. Once I was in Qatar with one of them. I will uh, tell you his name as one of this peace uh, movement. I told him, um, I have reached an opinion about uh, the Jewish. I told him the Jewish, the bad Jewish, is the, bad, the worst person on earth, and the good Jewish is the best person on earth. So he told me, well, where do you place me? I told him, I don't want you to know. So they have uh, good people, and I hope that we would uh, appreciate their efforts. Even in the U.S., uh, they are there. There is uh, Goliath, a book which I criticized. It's a Jewish-American uh, author. And uh, he documented all mistakes committed against the Palestinian people. So you have these kind of people and the neo -Nazists. But if we want to attack, um, we have to attack individuals, not the whole society or the government. Even William Hague, uh, the uh, US uh, or UK uh, foreign minister, when uh, there was, uh, were 
prisoners and uh, Israeli prisoners in Gaza, he used uh, to write uh, statements uh, sympathizing with the Israeli people. I told him in the newspaper, look at the Palestinians, uh, the children and um, women who are detained uh, in Israel and who are Palestinian. Why don't you sympathize with them? He sent me a letter and he asked me to withdraw my statement. I told him this is my opinion. I sent my opinion and if you're not okay with that, uh, uh, take me to court. So when you're in accordance with the law, you shouldn't fear anyone. Thank you. We would take the last question. Good evening, Mr. Jihad. We really enjoyed this uh, lecture and uh, dialogue. I have a very specific question about uh, the role of Arab journalists. And uh, if the uh, West or UK newspapers uh, allows you to take part in um, uh, English-speaking shows, so what is the room that the, the uh, well-known Arab journalists have? Uh, and if you, as a journalist and as a well-known uh, figure, um, would like uh, to maybe participate or take part in a certain uh, talk show. Would you be allowed to do that? And uh, do you think that uh, um, it is uh, possible for you to speak uh, with courage? Uh, or you think that uh, this is a selective process? Uh, because by following uh, the English-speaking shows, there is this, um, the Arab uh, guests are go through a selective process. We would not like now to talk about the Arab media, but I would like to focus on this selective process. And uh, sometimes the people or journalists uh, who are less competent are chosen. Could you please uh, clarify this if possible? Thank you. Yes, of course, uh, there is this process of uh, selective process. If an Arab journalist is invited to take part in a show and if he attacks uh, Israel, I don't think that he will be invited again. So I think that um, this selective process is there. Um, Arab journalists, uh, for example, appear on TV or on radio in London. They talk in a moderate way. They are very moderate. And uh, they only attack when they write in Arab newspapers. But for me, each, uh, if a journalist uh, attacks uh, um, harshly, w is not invited again. Uh, the problem is not this uh, selective process, but uh, uh, the problem is that uh, the Israeli uh, universities have a high uh, influence on the media. And I think that uh, this applies more on the US uh, than the UK, and it's uh, there in every country. I would like to pinpoint a positive aspect. Uh, Everyone is against uh, Israel. Uh, the um, churches in uh, the U.S. are against Israel. And um, all uh, what is issued by uh, these churches uh, condemns uh, Israel. And in every university there is the BBS, the boycott, divestment, and uh, uh, sanctions. So there is this uh, system against Israel in every university. And this has... Uh, um, move to Europe today. Many uh, European companies are threatening uh, not to deal uh, with uh, Israeli companies anymore. And uh, many European companies have uh, withdrawn uh, their uh, investments from Israel. There is a campaign against Israel in the whole world, even in the US. Uh, the books which were issued uh, lately are in evidence about that. Uh, I don't want to talk about this, not to fight with anyone. And even uh, these books that are issued in the West, Darkness at Night, uh, is one of the most famous uh, books in the 20th uh, century. And uh, three to four years ago, I assessed uh, the invention of a Jewish book. Uh, 
which is in the same orientation and uh, which talks about uh, the uh, disputes uh, of tribes uh, be, uh, between an Arab and uh, Muslim states and uh, uh, when the people were obliged to uh, go to East Europe or to flee to East Europe. He is a professor from Tel Aviv and um, And Plato also talks about the Atlantis or uh, other theories from Babylon. So uh, w this is what we learned uh, from Islam. And uh, the edition which is in Topkapi is the original edition. And uh, you need a, a scientist to be able to read it. I, I do not believe anything about this. They talk about uh, the Palestinians and the Palestine, which was uh, later on uh, established. But uh, the fact is uh, that uh, Palestine has always been there. And Amr ibn al-Khattab. talked uh, to the patriarch and asked him to pray with him and uh, he saw that um, the Christians are like the Jewish, they are fighting on the church over the church of nativity. I've seen uh, Zaki Nusayba at the hotel, 1,400 years old. It is there, the family is there. Khazar, uh, for instance, says, this is our uh, country, Abigdor Lieber, now uh, is from a uh, part of Ukraine. He is born there. Now the Russians are asking to get it. He used to work uh, at the cabaret as uh, a strong man. So uh, as such, we come, uh, we arrive to the end of our seminar. I would like to thank you all. Thank Mr. Jihad Al Khazin, who uh, has given us his experience in the field of journalism and talked to us about journalism in the Western world and uh, compared it to the Arabic uh, uh, region. I would like to thank you all for your kind attention, for your active participation in the discussions of the seminar. Hope to see you at the 19th conference uh, in tight technology, uh, challenges of the future, which will be held next Tuesday and Wednesday, 18 and 19th of March, starting at 10 o'clock in the hall of Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan. For further information about the conference, you can visit the uh, uh, ECSSR's website.